Hi everybody, hi all of you beautiful souls. This is Emmy from Feminine Revered and I have the absolute pleasure of chatting with the beautiful Shamit Horsfield today. Shamit is a new feminine paradigm priestess, an oracle and a sacred divine feminine leader. And we are going to be diving into the topic of the witch wound, which is such a potent, important theme for us to be addressing. So welcome Shamit. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I am so passionate about this conversation. <laughs> I know you are. I know you are. So let's just jump straight into it. Why the witch wound? Why is it so important for us to be looking at this topic? Yeah, thank you, Emmy. Um, you know, the more and more I study about what happened during the Salem witch uh, trials and just everything that happened during that time, you know, we're not even clear about how many people died and how many people were tortured, betrayed, <laughs> just like the more and more I find out, the more and more I realize how deep our sister wound goes. And so the more that I go down this rabbit hole, the more I realize how intimately connected the witch wound and the sister wound is. And so I feel that it is imperative that we have these conversations, even though it's uncomfortable, even though it's heavy, even though it's dark. And for a lot of us, it's really scary. Mm -hmm. um, but what I'm realizing it is that, you know, this is where the healing is. And um, I feel like this is, you know, the root of most of it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it is so intertwined with patriarchy and the systematic oppression and silencing of women as well, that I feel that when we start to dig deeper into the witch wound and the sister wound and really understand the incredibly far reaching impact of it throughout time, throughout space, throughout dimension, then we really start to understand the the possibility of it as well in terms of bringing healing to ourselves and the collective. What, what do you think is the most important thing for us to do right now in these times of transition that we are in? Yeah, I think um, I've been thinking about this a lot and really deeping into it. It's not just that we have this kind of dysfunction with aging, right? Which is a really big relevant topic. Because as we age, our noses get bigger, our ears get bigger, we get warts, we get these strange bumps. And, you know, and I've been looking and, you know, not with judgment, but how when we get older and become a crone, how we, we look more and more witchy. <laughs> so, you know, I've, I've been noticing that it's this disharmony and this disconnect from the aging process um, and how we're celebrated when we're young and we're beautiful and we're the maiden and we're the princess and we're the goddess. But then as we age, we're the witch, we're the, the hag, we're the, you know, the crone and how there's this real uh, disconnect and, um, just a horrible like uh, connection to the aging process and a devaluing of our feminine power being associated with youth and beauty, but not with wisdom. And so that's one. <laughs> but what's bigger than that to me is the the betrayal and the playing women against women part. And that's what I've been deepening into, that it is about responsibility. Because during, uh, you know, these trials, uh, women were played against women. Uh, p families were played against families. Um, and so there's this acknowledgement um, that I feel needs to happen. And this responsibility for what happened so that we can break these cycles of, of undermining each other, 
And that to me is what I feel really passionate about in, in the sense of healing the sister wound. You know, we're going to have to look, even though it's uncomfortable, even though it doesn't feel nice, if we're going to really heal and break the cycles, then we have to acknowledge what happened. Hmm. Absolutely. We have to acknowledge it. We have to honor what happened. And we also need to do that deep healing work. In this case, really, the only way out is, is through. And although it can be incredibly painful and it can really bring us to our knees when we start to do this healing work, we need to remember always that we're not just doing it for ourselves. We're doing it for those who came before us. We're doing it for those who burned in those times. And we're doing it for, the, for those who come after us so that we stop the buck here and we no longer pass on these incredibly painful, deep cellular memories to the ones who are our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren as well. So it is it is incredibly important, deep work that that is being done at such a beautiful level all around our planet at the moment. And Shamet, I would just love to hear from you. How do you approach this healing work? What is it that you bring into this collective healing that we're experiencing at the moment? Yeah, thank you, Emmy. Well, you know, one thing is reaching out to other women, uh, powerful women that I respect, like yourself, and, you know, offering up opportunities to collaborate. And so I'm so happy that you said yes to the self love and self marriage workshop that we're going to be co facilitating and teaching and holding healing space that in itself. Um, my experience thus far in collaborating with other women um, brings so much healing. Um, and so self-love um, is a huge part of healing the witch wound and the sister wound and the mother wound, as you know, and womb healing and working on those levels of healing my own womb space and healing my own witch wound because I know that when I heal myself and I work on those layers, then I am healing the collective. And when we meet in these conversations, like we're having now, that also is part of the healing. Um, I've also been running um, Heal the Witch Wound. Uh, the one that I'm doing tomorrow is of healing the sacred divine feminine witch wound. I wanted to really bring in the sacred bring in the divine with the word witch. So when I begin to talk about it, when I begin to feel into it, when I run these circles, it I feel like there's this energy that I need to bring to it and that that is part of the healing that is coming about as well. Mm, yeah. Absolutely, beautiful. What well, would you like to share a little bit more about the, the witch wound? circle that you're going to be running oh i'm so excited about it um you know i ran this uh circle i think it was around four or five years ago and i only had one woman come <laughs> i don't think that um the collective was really ready for this work and we're ready now and that brings so much joy and happiness to me because this work for me is so important and so deep and so special that we bring you know a really healing safe and sacred space where people can just be and you know my my own experience emmy with the witch wound was when i read a book called witch it's black yeah you know the book it's so good. Yes. yes <laughs> <laughs> um i love that book so much um and I read about half of it and I ended up going into a complete rage. And my husband, you know, at the time he was like, honey, why are you so angry? And I said, you have no idea. You have no idea. And he says, I don't know what's going on with you. You were so loving and, you know, so kind. And now you've been reading this book and you're just outraged. And I was, I had to put the, I had to put the book down. Um, so much welled up inside of me. And so that's part of my work is holding space 
for women's and men's rage or their their own holy sacred fire is what I call it because it's there for a reason. So really acknowledging the victims that were victimized um, and the anger that wells up inside of us when we start to learn about what happened and what is still happening to this day. Um, on a more subtle <laughs> way, we are still, you know, being um, put out as outcasts or not being accepted, um, being the strange ones, being the weird ones, being the woo-woo ones, you know, all the ways that society still keeps trying to push us down. And um, yeah, oh, I get so fired up about this. But just by having these conversations, just by holding this space, we are creating so much healing. And with the healing, as you know, comes empowerment. Mm, absolutely. Well, beautiful. This is such deep and powerful and sacred work, Shamit, that you're doing. So thank you for everything that you do and all that you are. And I wish you the most magical of circles tomorrow. Thank you so much. I want to just add one more thing is that when I explained it to my husband, when I explained to him the book that I was reading, when I explained to him what I had learned, um, this was so healing because a healing balm came to our relationship. Um, he could then understand and he could then hold space and he could acknowledge me. And so there was in the beginning a pushing away and a blaming and a shaming because he's a man but what I realized with the deepening of understanding the whole picture that it wasn't just men and women, it's deeper than that because men were punished and killed and harassed and betrayed as well. You know, actually a lot of these, of course, 80, more than 80% were women. However, a lot of the people that were you know, blamed and shamed as being witches were the intuitives. They were the healers. They were the empowered ones. They were the ones that were outspoken. They were the change makers. They were the ones that threatened the, the status quo, um, you know, status quo. And so my husband actually brought a whole other level in conversation to the table where then I could acknowledge him as a sacred divine male mm. and he then supported me. And so I, I want to just add that because, you know, it did take our relationship to a whole new level. So we don't want to push the men away. We want to bring them in because when we bring them in, they can hold and support that energy, which is part of the healing balm. Mm, absolutely. And of course, there's also the perpetrator wound that lives very strongly in the male consciousness as well, because of what happened, because of all the violence that was imparted on women by men at that time. So men tend to carry that wound inside themselves. And there's a lot of reconciliation and forgiveness work to be done for both women and men there as well. Mm. Oh, Annie, I love that you just said that. Because you're right, that's what he said. He said, I feel so bad. Sometimes I feel ashamed of being a man and being part of mankind because of what happened. And so, yeah, exactly. There's a lot of healing there too. Thank you for bringing mm. the conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much, Hamid. Thank you again for all that you do. Thank you so much, Emmy. So nice to have... Uh, have this conversation with you. And I'm very, very much looking forward um, to our work together soon. Me too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Blessings be. Blessed be.